Howdy calculus fans! Hey, today we have a, a short and sweet lesson. Sweet as in this one is, is pretty important and it might answer a question that you've had for a little bit of time in calculus. What I want to look at is an, an integral. Um, we'll make it into a definite integral in a bit here, but the integral to start is uh, 1 over t dt. And if you're curious, I think you've uh, you've probably struggled with this one before. Hey, why why haven't we taken an antiderivative of this? What's up with that? Why haven't we looked at this? Uh, pretty simple function. That's the reciprocal function. That's what it'll do for us. Uh, what's the problem? What's up? Well, uh, maybe you noticed if we try to apply the power rule. I think of a rewrite as t to the negative one. And if I apply my general power rule to that, the antiderivative would be 1 over 0 times t to the 0. Well, that's a big problem in math, and we can't, that's a whole bunch of nothing. We can't really do anything with that. So um, let's investigate this function and its antiderivative a little bit more. I will call this, uh, to start today, the function f. And let's make this into a definite integral. Let's call f the definite integral that goes from 1 to x. So graphically what's going on is that this is going to find, this function f is going to find or accumulate the area under the 1 over t curve. So what does the 1 over t find a black one that works here. What does the 1 over, oh that one's nice. 1 over t, what does that look like? This is our t axis. Call this the y axis. If I put in 1 to this function I get a 1. We said this is the reciprocal function so when I put in 2 I get a 1 half. 3 gives me 1 third. Um, other interesting points to plug in would be like a half would give us 2 a third would give us three, so on and so forth. Looks like that. Now what the definite integral piece does is the lower limit, that's where I'm going to start counting my area, and I'm going to go up to an x value of, in this case, it's a variable x, and what the func f function will output is the area under that curve. It's, it's time to investigate this a little bit to find some points. So one obvious point on this graph is the point, if I put in 1, so if I put in 1 here, uh, I have no accumulation of area, there's no width. So that gives me a, an area or the value of the definite integral to be 0. That one's obvious. The next one I want to look at is flip this around a little bit, suppose we get out an area of 1, what x value would we have to plug in? <coughs> Excuse me. I can see by um, this, this square here that it's got to be uh, bigger than, than an x value of 2 here, but I'm not quite sure since I didn't draw this to scale and they're not, this isn't a shape that I can find the area of. I'm not quite sure how far we go out in this. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to get out a graphing calculator and let's do some guessing and checking to fill in this ordered pair. So what we're going to do is enter in 1 over x. We're going to do a little variable switch because it's easier uh, just to switch it on a TI-83 or 84 to 1 over 1 over x. Put that into y1. Let's get a, a viewing window, an x min of 0. Let's get an x max of something say 10. Let's do x scale of 0, y min of 0, let's go y max, uh, 2 should suffice there. I don't, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to worry about this part right now. It's a further investigation we could do, y scale of 0, graph that thing, should verify the curve we drew here. And I want you to use the definite integral feature of the graph, which is found in second trace, which is calc, 
option number seven, I believe, for these calculators. Ask us for a lower limit. <coughs> That's one. And I want you to investigate with the, the upper limit. So say we put an upper limit of two in, just to make sure you're doing it right. It does the cool little animation and shading, and it gives us an area of about 0.7, 7 tenths. I'm looking for one. So I want you to spend some time guessing and checking and running that program again, always the lower limit of one, adjusting the upper limit so you can get an area of one. 